Hello, friends. My name is Lilith, and welcome back to House of Tales. It's been a while since I last filmed the series, and I'm happy that I found some time to sit down and work on my project with you. I'm currently working on a body of new work for an upcoming group show here in Providence, Rhode Island, which would be in early December. I'm working on just the ink lines today, and this video was shot over two days, a total of about six hours. I was working pretty slow because I didn't start with any roughs or sketches. I wanted to see where the fairies would lead me. Today we are looking at the subject of the fae, or fairies. A mythical creature described in folklore as a spirit, often with supernatural or metaphysical abilities. A reoccurring motif in legends is the need to ward off fairies using protective charms. For example, a four-leaf clover, food, or church bells. The term fairy can be used to describe goblins and gnomes as well, but we will be looking at the sprites, a wispy spirit that loves mischief and enjoys leading travelers astray. The wings on fairies are a somewhat more modern addition, popular during the Victorian era and are actually rare in traditional folklore. Instead of a fairy tale, I would like to look at a true story today, a real event that happened in England during the early 20th century. I came across the case of the cotton leaf fairies during my research. It's a series of five photographs taken by two cousins. In 1917, when the first two photographs were taken, Elise was 16 years old and Frances was 9. The girls were wandering in the woods, camera in hand, when they sighted fairies for the first time. These pictures came to the attention of theosophists, who used them to illustrate and support their ideology. Theosophists interpreted them as clear and visible evidence of the psychic phenomena and thought the materialization of fairies meant humanity was ascending in evolution and was ready for the next cycle. The initial public reaction was mixed. Some accepted the images as genuine, while others believed they had been faked. In 1980, the two women finally admitted these images were fabricated, but retained that they were only trying to reproduce what they saw in their mind, documenting their thoughts in these photographs. After the first two pictures drawing national attention, the girls' mothers and the theosophists tried to persuade Elise and Frances to capture more pictures, this time carefully marking plates and inspecting their belongings to ensure that there would be no fabrication. This part of the story made me sad. I think putting that much pressure on two children for a self-serving agenda of spirituality is quite disturbing. And I think the publicity ruined the original intentions of the girls, who were having fun and playing with cameras, walking in nature to capture whatever comes to them. Many medical professionals insisted that the girls must suffer mental disorders and illnesses, and demanded that they be treated right away to cleanse them of these absurd fairy thoughts. In 1921, just four years after the first photograph, the girls have become quite tired of the whole ordeal. They shot two portraits sitting where they had last been, without any spirits, and it was titled, Fed Up with Fairies. This story really broke my heart, and I deeply empathize with Elise and Frances. Society and the world of grown-ups are quick to exploit the imagination of children, for money, or fame, or power. I felt like the world didn't give these girls the space they needed to explore their consciousness. And after this incident, I wouldn't be surprised if they shut off their intuition entirely, just to make all this noise go away.
<laughs> when Elise and Francis passed away in the late 1980s, their original photographs were auctioned off at over 20,000 pounds. The magic died a long time ago. Theosophists believe fairies are the thought forms of greater beings who are in charge of the evolution of the plant and vegetable kingdom and live in a higher dimension than humans. There are four kingdoms on Earth at the moment. Minerals, plants, animals, and humans. Another classification for fairies would be that they are spirits in between evolution, progressing from the plant to the animal kingdom. After reincarnation, the fairy, who might have been an oak tree or a rose in its past life, may manifest the form of a hummingbird or a bee. The color of the fairy reflects its ethereal body and it gains an astral body as it passes through the great wheel, living through all four elements as creatures governed by them. It's an interesting experience working with fairies because they don't communicate with me in the manner I'm used to. Gnomes and goblins are temperamental and emotional, so I can sense their energy easily, whereas fairies are much more elusive and their presence is very subtle. I have a stronger connection with spirit guides and the sky more than the earth or the sea when it comes to these vibrations, which may be why I observe primarily through hearing and auditory rather than sight or touch. If we were to assume fairies do exist in the realm between dream and reality, we must also recognize fairies are animated, not living creatures. Similar to ghosts or haunting spirits, these elementals serve the purpose of recording or carrying out minor tasks given by beings with consciousness. When a thought form has completed its task, it dissolves back into nature. Imagine fairies as the cells of an organ, capable of being regenerated at a rapid pace, but incapable of having individual consciousness from the body. Here I am just finishing up my line work. I feel a little burned out after two days and decided to throw this up on Procreate and begin working with color because I know I want this to be a colored print. I scanned it in at 600 dpi and airdropped the JPEG to the iPad. I included some footage of my coloring process, but I'm not fully confident in my digital skills and I have a lot to improve upon. I like the overall tones and hues here, and now I'm trying to decide how much original line work to keep and how much to redraw. Thank you so much for watching this video. I am looking to release some prints in November, including the dog postcard from a previous Sunday video, so I will definitely update everyone on those. I hope to finish this by the end of next week, so wish me luck. <laughs> I'm very slow with digital, I need to practice more, I know. Have a wonderful day or night, and I'll see you on Sunday.